So hi guys, how's it going? I don't know if you guys have heard the news, I'm sure you have already, but the UK is shutting down pretty much for the next three weeks apart from essential services and we're going to be kind of stuck in the house for most of the next three weeks, but there are a few caveats. So I thought we'd go through some of what Boris Johnson's been talking about. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Because the critical thing we must do to stop the disease spreading between households, that is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes. Shopping for basic necessities as infrequently as possible. One form of exercise a day for example, a run, walk or cycle, alone or with members of your household, any medical need to provide care or to help a vulnerable person, and travelling to and from work, but only where this is absolutely necessary and cannot be done from home. There's going to be an awful lot of people who are probably going to be either working from home or they're not going to be working at all. I really think for a lot of people are going to be self-isolating, for example. I don't know, I guess this is necessary, but this is the biggest restriction on civil liberties and freedoms that we've actually ever had in, in my living memory in the UK. Um, and I do understand why it's happening. It's honestly an unprecedented event in modern history. And I think Boris Johnson's kind of brave to take this stance. Honestly, I think there's going to be a lot of backlash. I don't think everyone's going to comply. And I think probably a lot of people are going to be fined or arrested. That's all. These are the only reasons you should leave your home. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. You should not be meeting family members who do not live in your home. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food and medicine. And you should do this as little as you can. And use food delivery services where you can. This message was not sponsored by Amazon, but honestly, I think Amazon are one of the biggest shows in town for this. I do think there's probably a problem with um, supply of food, and I think the media's not particularly covering it. Certainly when I've been in the supermarkets around here in Farnborough, there's about 50% of all the shelves are empty. It's very difficult to get meat or eggs or sometimes milk. Um, it's a bit dodgy with milk, I think. There's a lot of things that are okay, but nevertheless, because people have been stocking up and because I think the supply has been affected, honestly couldn't say how bad the problem is, but certainly it's quite a big problem here. We managed to get some meat the other day and also managed to get some eggs fairly recently. And I was just overjoyed when I got the eggs, honestly. It's, I never lived through um, rationing or the First or Second World Wars. I kind of got a sense of what rationing was like. But yeah, this is totally unprecedented and I think the lockdown is going to affect a lot of people. There's a lot of people with psychological problems who are probably going to really suffer because of this lockdown. I think there's going to be a lot of people who are scared, not just worried about the virus, but who are kind of worried about the global economy. And it's, it's all very well to think about the global economy as the FTSE 100 and things, but you know, manufacturing, chi manufacturing in China is down because a lot of people are in quarantine or a lot of people are, you know, staying out of the big cities for understandable reasons. Um, supply chains are certainly probably affected. Um, I know the um, market's being flooded with oil and stuff, but the actual global economy is, uh, I think, probably heading for a really big crash. I mean, for a start, 95% of all businesses in the UK are small or medium SME or some, sometimes called SMB but a lot of these may only have two or three months of um, money left in the company before they actually go bust. We're probably going to see a lot of bankruptcies and a lot of destruction of the global economy. And this is going to affect people, it's going to affect jobs, prosperity. The other big problem I see is if a large number of people die. That's of course tragic but it could also crash house prices. A lot of finance 
assets are actually based on the value of homes to some extent, right? So again, if the value of houses drops, well, that kind of caused the last um, big housing crash, didn't it? 2008, wasn't it? We could see a sort of repeat of that, only worse, possibly. And I don't know, I think difficult times are ahead, guys. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the powers to enforce them, including through fines and dispersing gatherings. To ensure compliance with the government's instruction to stay at home, we will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods, including clothing and electronic stores and other premises, including libraries, playgrounds and outdoor gyms and places of worship. I think there could be a real problem with closing places of worship. I mean, it remains to be seen, but I think a lot of people are going to want to still attend places of worship. I also wonder what counts as essential. So, for example, would um, pet food shops be essential because people need pet food? I realise the supermarket sells this, but it's, it's something for people kind of want and need. It'd be interesting to actually see what the government thinks is essential. I have to say, Boris Johnson was looking really, really tired. Probably like how I'm looking now. <laughs> Last time I saw him, he looks a little bit better here. But, um... I don't know, it's it's still the weight of the world on his shoulders because, you know, I'm sure he's aware that closing down the economy and, you know, preventing people from leaving for the next three weeks is going to cause a lot of problems too. We'll stop all gatherings of more than two people in public, excluding people you live with, and we'll stop all social events, including weddings, baptisms and other ceremonies, but excluding funerals. Parks will remain open. Well, I mean, if you want to party, guys, there's only one way to go. Ah, oh, tragic, but, you know, we need a bit of humour, I think, to get through these dark times. To be honest, as someone who's a bit of an introvert occasionally, um, I don't think I'll be particularly affected because, well, I quite like where I live, the people I live with, and I wonder how um, draconian the police are going to be, and I also wonder if some people are going to sort of resist this and they're not going to want to um, stay at home. Again, we'll have to see what happens here, but you wonder if the police are just going to fine people or whether they're going to try to lock people up or force them to remain in ha indoors. Um, you also wonder about the health service. Um, the health service is sort of built um, with certain assumptions, right? So they assume that a certain number of the population are going to be sick at any one time. And if significantly more people are sick, then again, the whole thing kind of crashes. There, there probably isn't enough capacity for a lot of the population to get sick. And this isn't just the NHS. This would um, apply to pretty much every health institution in the world. Open for exercise but gatherings will be dispersed. No Prime Minister wants to enact measures like this. I know the damage that this disruption is doing and will do to people's lives, to their businesses and to their jobs. And that's why we've produced a huge and unprecedented programme of support, both for workers and for business. And I can assure you that we will keep these restrictions under constant review we will look again in three weeks and relax them if the evidence shows we are able to. So three weeks is one heck of a long time, guys. I guess this is the new norm for now. One of my fears is what happens if the um, virus doesn't particularly go away for another year or year and a half or two years? What if it remains fairly prevalent? I mean, we can't keep the economy on lockdown forever. I think Boris Johnson's probably doing the right thing here. Actually denting the um, increase in people getting sick will push that over a longer period of time and, you know, we can start to build a bit of um, immunity to the virus. The NHS won't be overwhelmed. So I do see the logic in quarantining everyone, essentially. But at present, there are just no easy options. The way ahead is hard, and it is still true that many lives will sadly be lost. I just want to point out, guys, I look like rubbish because I'm really tired. Um, I'm just about to go to bed, I think. But I just wanted to comment on this because it's something that's going to affect a very large number of people in the UK. I think we'll be okay and I think we'll get through this. I mean, other people have talked about sort of wartime spirit, but it is comparable. Even though this um, shut-in 
isn't great, it is a good opportunity to be creative. So you could write a book or make music or art or make a video or do something creative if you're shut in and you're not working. The other thing is, this really shows who's essential in the economy. So, for example, some people we might have assumed are essential may not actually be quite as essential. So that's an interesting social commentary right there. That's all I wanted to say, guys. But um, stay safe, stay well, and follow the rules. That's all I can really say. We'll get through this, guys. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And have a good evening. Well, or have a good day. <laughs> Goodbye.